They say tequila will solve all your problems. It's worth a shot. Today, I'm going to recap a 2018 action crime film called The Outsider. A quick warning, there will be major spoilers ahead. The movie tells a story of a man, Nick Lowell, who was imprisoned in Japan in 1954. He is a former United States soldier sentenced to 10 years in prison. The first scene of this film shows Nick, who is on duty to clean the prison bathroom area. Not long after that, five well-built, tattooed men came out of the bathroom. One of the men approached Nick and glared defiantly at him. After the five men had left, Nick entered the bathroom and saw another man hanging with his hands tied. Nick did not stand still and shouted for the guards while trying to save the man. But oddly enough, Nick's action to save the man from hanging himself did not get any credit. Not long after, a group of prison guards pulled Nick and another prisoner who had held him beaten. The head of the prison guard said he had received a letter from the man who was about to hang himself, saying that a Yakuza would be sent out of prison. Nick didn't understand Japanese, so he didn't know what the prison guard said. The prison guard became increasingly annoyed that he finally ordered Nick to be locked up in an isolation room. In the isolation room, it turns out that Nick is locked up with the man he previously saved from hanging himself. The man introduced himself as Kiyoshi, a Yakuza part of the Shiramatsu clan. Kiyoshi then asks Nick for help and tells him about his plan to escape prison. Kiyoshi was deliberately trying to kill himself so that the guards could take him out to the hospital. Later at the hospital, a Shiramatsu member will come to help Kiyoshi escape. For this assistance, Kiyoshi promised Nick that his brothers in the Shiramatsu clan would help Nick later if he managed to escape. The plan was made. Nick gets rocks, while the prisoners do mining work around the prison area. After that, he sharpened the stone until it was sharp, so Kiyoshi could use it for his plan. Returning to the isolation room a few days later, Kiyoshi prepares to stab himself with the sharp stone, asks Nick to make sure he stays alive, and calls the guards to save him. The plan went smoothly. The guards panicked, seeing Kiyoshi's condition, and set off the alarm. Long story short, Nick can be released earlier than the length of his sentence in prison. He came out of prison with a new appearance, after cutting his hair and shaving his beard. A man and a car were waiting for Nick outside the prison and took him to Osaka Shiramatsu, Yakuza clan headquarters. Arriving at the place, the Shiramatsu clan officials welcomed Nick and thanked him for his help. Then one of the Shiramatsu leaders offers him a job, dealing with their business with the American. Nick then agreed to the job offer. In the evening, Nick goes to a gambling area and a bar after a member of the Shiramatsu clan gives him money so he can rent an inn. Nick meets a beautiful Japanese woman at the bar who immediately catches his eye, so he gives her more tips. The next day, Kiyoshi takes Nick to a factory to meet an American man named Anthony Panethi. Nick's job is to negotiate with Panethi about the metal factory and business he is running because he had previously rejected Shiramatsu's negotiation offer. Panethi received a negotiation offer from another Yakuza clan, Sizu from Kobe, for using an American negotiator. Panethi did not simply welcome Nick's arrival. Instead, he criticized Japanese culture and the Yakuza and ensured he wouldn't sell the metal from his factory cheaper than Shiramatsu. Nick realizes that negotiations can't go smoothly with just words, so he grabs the typewriter machine and slams it on Panethi's head, making Panethi agree to consider Shiramatsu's offer. After the first job was done well, Shiramatsu clan officials took Nick to a bar, including Kiyoshi. But while they were drinking, the Seizu clan came to confront what they did to Panathi. One of the Seizu clan members continues to provoke Nick until his anger is ignited, and he hits the Seizu member's head with a drink bottle. The Shiramatsu clan members acted quickly by pointing a gun at the Seizu clan, giving up their intention to avenge Nick's actions and choosing to leave the bar. Nick's actions at the bar caught Shiramatsu's attention and made Kiyoshi like him. Kiyoshi then gives Nick a luxury apartment and offers to join as a Yakuza under the Shiramatsu clan. Then Kiyoshi invites Nick to finish a job at one of the bars, where the owner tries to take over from Shiramatsu. 
When negotiations again don't go well, Nick hits the bar owner in the neck before Kiyoshi stabs him to death. After completing the mission again, Kiyoshi invites Nick to a nightclub owned by Shiramatsu. Here a beautiful woman, who had previously met Nick at the bar, was dancing with some men. Nick continued to pay attention to the petite Japanese woman, and apparently, Kiyoshi did the same. Kiyoshi then pulled the woman's body away from the dance floor and scolded her. He was worried that a Seizu clan member came carrying weapons to the nightclub and saw Kiyoshi's little sister on the dance floor. After that, Kiyoshi asked Nick for help to take the woman back home, who turned out to be Kiyoshi's younger sister, named Miyu. Nick then carried out the order, but when he arrived in front of Miyu's house, Miyu even teased him into coming to the house. They then make love, and Nick sees a Yakuza tattoo on Miyu's back. The scene changes the next day, when Kiyoshi calls Nick again to give a new mission. He asks him to buy weapons from an American soldier for this mission. Kiyoshi explains that the soldier must not know that neither Nick nor this purchase is related to the Shiramatsu clan, so Nick had to do the task alone. Then Nick went to the dock, where he was supposed to meet the United States soldier to buy weapons. Instead of meeting the soldier, he saw a corpse, followed by the Seizu clan's arrival. The clan attempts to thwart the purchase of weapons and rob Nick's money. However, because Nick had previously hidden the money in the car, the members of the Seizu clan could not find the money, which irritated them and made them decide to kill him. One of the Seizu members is asked to kill Nick, and after that, he threatens Nick to kneel. At first, Nick obeyed the order, but he managed to turn things around with his skills and instead attacked the Seizu clan, killing two of their members. The chaos on the dock is known by the leader of Shiramatsu. He immediately gathered all the clan members, including Nick and Kiyoshi. Shiramatsu's leader suspects a traitor among them, who leaked the weapons purchase plan. However, Kiyoshi ensures that the $2 million that Nick brought are safe, because it has been hidden. In addition, Shiramatsu's leader blames Nick for making the mistake of killing two Seheiza members, which could lead to war between the Yakuza. To avoid this, Shiramatsu's leader ordered Nick to apologize by cutting off two of his fingers. Kiyoshi, who heard about it, begged Shiramatsu's leader to be allowed to cut off two of his fingers because he felt guilty for ordering Nick. Shiramatsu's leader agreed, and then he sent Nick and Kiyoshi's finger pieces to the Seizu clan as an apology for the deaths of two of its members. The scene shifts to Nick and the leader of Shiramatsu talking in the car. Their conversation revealed that Shiramatsu's leader, who was also Kiyoshi's stepfather, suspected that a Seizu spy was in their clan. It turns out that the leader of Shiramatsu brought Nick to a ceremony where he was welcomed before being officially accepted into the Shiramatsu family clan. As they celebrate Nick's joining in the evening, Nick instead comes out of the bar to talk to Kiyoshi. Nick informs Kiyoshi of his relationship with Miyu, which initially does not get Kiyoshi's approval. Kiyoshi hoped that his younger sister would not marry a Yakuza because he was worried about her safety. But Nick insists on convincing him that he will protect Miyu no matter what. After hearing and knowing that Nick and Miyu had slept together, Kiyoshi finally agreed to their relationship and even congratulated Nick because it meant they had become brothers. After officially joining as a Yakuza in the Shiramatsu clan and getting Kiyoshi's approval, Nick decides to get the same tattoo as Miyu on his back. Miyu accompanies Nick when he is being tattooed and explains the meaning of the distinctive tattoo on the Yakuza's body. In the following days, Nick lived life as a Yakuza. One day, while on the train with Miyu, Nick saw one of the Seiza members who had previously tried to kill him on the dock. The scene then shifted to show the Seizu group coming to the Shiramatsu clan headquarters. They planned to offer a business deal, but the leader of Shiramatsu felt insulted because Seizu did not bring in their leader, but the members who were judged to be very young. Although the leader showed disappointment, one of the Shiramatsu officials named Orochi persuaded him to accept the business offer, which was immediately rejected by the Shiramatsu leader. That evening, Orochi was drinking with Kiyoshi when he vented his frustration that the leader of Shiramatsu had not listened to his advice. Kiyoshi warned him, but it seemed he had already been burned with anger. Especially when Orochi came home, the leader of Shiramatsu showed annoyance by refusing to see him. 
Orochi left the bar to meet Miyu. It turns out that Miyu and Orochi used to have a love affair, and this time, he tries to seduce her, which she expressly refuses. Orochi's anger peaks until he slaps her while trying to harass her. The scene again shows the meeting between Shiramatsu and Sihizu's group at a sumo match. This time, the chairman of Sihizu came to Shiramatsu's leader to make another offer. It's not a business offer, but an offer for the Shiramatsu's leader to retire peacefully and let his clan join the Seihizu. Shiramatsu's leader refused and considered the offer an insult. He reminded him that the Shiramatsu clan was wolves, not dogs that could be locked up in a fence. Before leaving, he advised the chairman of Seihizu to be careful on the way back to Kobe. Meanwhile, an American man suddenly greets Nick, who is on his way home. The man was Polly Bowers, an American soldier and Nick's partner, who was on leave. Bowers looks surprised, but happy to meet Nick, so Nick has no other choice but to accompany him. However, while having a conversation, Bowers threatens to report Nick, who faked his death to avoid a military trial. Nick thought quickly and invited him to come to his house. Nick offers Bowers a drink at the house, but he instead takes a penknife and stabs Bowers in the neck to death. Then Nick goes to Miyu's house. When Miyu opens the house door, Nick is surprised to see the wound on her face. He was furious, urging Miyu to say who did that to her. She refuses to tell him, and instead says that she is pregnant with Nick's child. But surprisingly, she asks him to leave her. Nick then leaves Miyu's house to go to Kiyoshi's house and tell Kiyoshi about Miyu's pregnancy. Nick told Kiyoshi that he would leave Shiramatsu if Kiyoshi wanted to. Kiyoshi was not angry, but instead asked Nick to come into the house. Then he gave Nick two swords named Daisho and told him that the Daisho swords belonged to Kiyoshi's father. One of the swords is used for killing and the other for ending one's own life. Kiyoshi then said he had taken care of Miyu since she was a baby, and from now on, he handed over the responsibility to Nick. Nick takes one of the Dasho swords and asks him to help bury Bower's corpse. On the other hand, Orochi is seen at Seihizu's headquarters and is talking to the clan chief. It turned out that Orochi had betrayed Shiramatsu, and he planned to destroy the clan. Then the next day, the leader of Shiramatsu was at the tailor shop, escorted by Kiyoshi and Nick. When the leader did not come out of the dressing room, Nick followed and found a tailor shop employee strangling the leader. Nick tries to save him, and Kiyoshi, who comes to see the incident, shoots the employee. Then they rushed into the car, but before they could escape, the Seiza members came and attacked them. Nick and Kiyoshi counterattack, while trying to protect the leader, though a member of the Seizu clan shoots Kiyoshi, and he is killed. Nick and the leader of Shiramatsu manage to escape and return to the base, where they gather all the remaining clan members. The leader mentioned that among the cars escorting them to the tailor shop, there were members of the Seizu clan, so this meant that there were traitors within the Shiramatsu clan. Then they decided on revenge and started a war with the Seizu clan. On the other side, Miyu cries hysterically when Nick informs her about Kiyoshi's death. Nick and the remaining members of the Shiramatsu clan begin to kill the Yakuza from Seizu one by one. The battle was almost won by Shiramatsu after Nick managed to threaten one of Seihizu's top brass. But Seihizu's leader sent a little boy to go to Shiramatsu's headquarters and deliver a message so that they could end the war. Seihizu's leader invites Shiramatsu's clan to fight in a neutral area without using weapons. Shiramatsu's leader agrees to this invitation and sends Nick and the clan members to the docks to start the fight. Surprisingly, Chairman Seihizu came with Orochi, who immediately admitted that he had betrayed Shiramatsu. The leader of Shiramatsu, who had already considered Orochi as his child, forgave him, then walked over to ask him to return to Shiramatsu before it was too late. When they hugged, Orochi instead stabbed Shiramatsu's leader to death. The Shiramatsu clan members, who saw this couldn't approach because they were surrounded by weapons. Then Orochi told them that the Shiramatsu clan was over and he would let Nick live if he left Miyu. Nick ignores Orochi's words and intends to attack, but a sniper shoots him in the leg. Meanwhile, on the other hand, the police raided and burned Shiramatsu's headquarters. 
That night, Nick secretly infiltrates Miyu's house, guarded by the Seizu clan, to take Miyu away. Then he comes to Seizu's headquarters, with the Daosho sword previously given by Kiyoshi. Nick chivalrously asked the Seizu clan for permission to kill Orochi. But after confronting Nick, Orochi throws back Nick's Daosho sword and says he won't fight him because Nick is just a gaijin or foreigner and can never be Yakuza completely. After getting his sword back, Nick immediately slashes Orochi's head without thinking. The leader of the Seizu clan unexpectedly stopped another member who was about to shoot Nick. Instead, he ordered Nick to go home because he had avenged Shiramatsu by killing Orochi. Nick obeyed the order and left Sehizu's headquarters. The outsider closes, with the scene of Nick coming to the apartment, where he hides Miyu. She greets him and hugs him tightly, while the other Shiramatsu Yakuza, guarding the apartment, salute Nick, indicating that he will become the new leader of the Shiramatsu clan. If you enjoyed this video, don't be shy to hit the like button, and if you disliked it, hit the dislike button twice, just to be sure. You should watch the whole movie, Thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe for more videos like this.